This episode of Tailgate Talks is brought to you by Blanca. Tune in live to interact with the hosts on Wednesday nights, 6.30 central, at www.twitch.tv backslash Blanca OG. Hope you enjoy the show. And here we go, week 22, episode 22. We are here, here with uh, Dustin, here with Brooks. We have been at this for, for quite a while now. Uh, feeling, feeling more and more experienced every week. Liking it. Um, so guys, uh, Jillian, Roger, Drew, happy to see y'all here, guys, as always. Um, make sure that if you haven't already, you are following us on Twitter, uh, at tailgate underscore talks. Um, also obviously hit up the Instagram and Facebook personal accounts for Dustin. That is Dustin Wimmer 22, uh, Brooks, get, give him a follow at Calvin B Barrett and me, Arlie. You can find me at Blanca where the L is a one. <laughs> I still, I don't know why I get a kick every time. I don't know what it is. Um, but also, uh, kind of more importantly, uh, obviously follow us on all the socials. Uh, it helps us grow, uh, whenever we're looking for sponsors and stuff, this is going to be one of the first things, things that they ask us is how's y'all social media presence. On top of this, uh, subscriptions and all of that. Um, but uh, kind of more importantly, we have the email. We have tailgate talks pod at gmail.com. We have that available for you guys so that we can send us your thoughts and questions, but uh, kind of also contribute to the show. If, if there's anything that you want us to be talking about or covering in the show, make sure you send us an email about it so we can kind of tune this, obviously, for the audience that actually listens to the show. Uh, we want to make more of a better show for you, obviously, but. Uh, it, it, it's there for you. I don't think we really have too many interactions with the email, do we? Zero. Yeah. <laughs> it's like so, non-existent right now. So, right now. so we're, 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 we're here to obviously entertain and put on a show and share our knowledge with you guys. But also, if there's something that you think we could be doing better, give that, th- give that to us through the email. Um, lastly, we do have a YouTube page. Uh, do I have a link for it? Yeah, I do. Right here. Uh, follow the YouTube page. That's where we post all of the all of the live video recordings. So if you ever wanted to go back and see our reactions, me and me and Dustin getting into Houston Dallas arguments, and you want to see our faces for it, actually, you can go back and check the videos on the YouTube page. There, uh, I know Brooks. Uh, I think you don't, don't you say you pull most of the videos from the YouTube itself. Whenever you're editing, yeah. Usually when I'm clipping videos, I go hit up the YouTube uh, and then you know clip it from there, but. Yeah. yeah, you can get a lot of good reactions, see our faces, see how yeah. we react when Arlie makes a bad basketball pick or something oh, like that. No, there's plenty. It's of always those. there's always plenty of uh, <laughs> stuff to watch on there. There's plenty. Um, but yeah, the the, the YouTube channel, uh, we haven't really done much promoting on it, but we've posted videos. I think all the way back to like episode 14 or 13. It's it, it goes back a little ways on that page. Um, so yeah, hit up the YouTube channel. Um, so next thing that we do, do do need to talk about is going to be the tailgate talks bracket challenge. Uh, Brooks, uh, you want to take it away and explain this to, to the peoples again? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, Sunday is selection Sunday, a sacred holiday for us college basketball fans, uh, across the country. Uh, we will be doing a bracket on ESPN, uh, under tailgate talks this is going to be the group name. We're going to do a challenge. A uh, $20 entry to compete with the Tailgate Talks crew and put your bracket up against Dustin's, Arlie's, myself's, and the bracket that we pick on the live Twitch stream that we'll will be doing on Monday night following Selection Sunday. Uh, so if you know us personally, text us. If you follow us on any of the social medias, DM us or send us an email at tailgatetalkspod at gmail.com if you want to be involved in this. Uh, fill out your bracket. All you have to do is have it done by the first tip off of uh, Friday. Follow us on social media to keep updates uh, with us on who's winning, who's doing the best. Listen to the podcast. Uh, all those good things to be involved. We'll have prizes for first, second, and third place. Uh, everyone who places will get a Tailgate Talks t-shirt as well. So uh, we love the tournament. 
we want to get you guys involved. So be on the lookout for that. Um, once that bracket gets set, we will send out invites to anybody who has mentioned that they want to join and anybody else who is uh, wanting to get in on the action. So and, uh, be and ready. Good, good shot to win some money, you know. I know. Yeah. Uh, uh, shout like, out, uh, shout out, Drexel punching their ticket yesterday. <laughs> Won the sixty in the Colonial so Athletic. So proud of them. I was look. I was looking forward to that all year, man. Ah, uh. <laughs> dragons. Um, so next thing we're going to be discussing is this week's uh, tailgate talks T-shirt giveaway. It's given to uh, away to Alex Rael. I, I, I've, I've actually never known how to say her last name. Is that how you say it? I worked with her. Shit. <laughs> Alex, <laughs> Alex, Chimmy's in my Alex. As Alex Chimmy's, so. I'm pretty sure. Anyways, uh, anybody from the Lubbock area, if you've been to Chimmy's within the last two or three years, you've seen this girl. Uh, she she won last week's giveaway. All you had to do, we made it real nice and easy, real nice and simple. All you had to do was share the podcast, share the show, share a post, something, and we wanted to make it as simple as we could. And we had very few One entries. Of you. <laughs> we had very very few entries, and that's. That's fine, but but we need some more effort, guys. We need some more effort from the crash the crew. So it's like the easiest stuff ever, guys. We're literally tossing <laughs> uh, you softballs. Throw, right throw, here. Throwing, uh, throw, throwing you for 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 you to to hit it deep on that one. Um, but that is gonna be Alex for this week's. Congratulations, welcome to the tailgate crashers. Hope you hopefully you enjoy the shirt. Hopefully that you wear it at work. Uh, I doubt that they would. But anyways, uh, so next week's giveaway. So we're going to be doing our live picks for, of our brackets on Monday night. Uh, that's whenever we're going to be getting together, doing a live stream of that. Come join the live stream. So what we're going to be doing is doing a live giveaway during the live stream. And uh, that'll be the next t-shirt giveaway. So kind of be on the lookout for that. We'll post a little bit more details to the socials. Uh, just kind of uh, be paying attention to our social media accounts for, for how we're yeah. going to enter. I believe we, we may do like a little marble race game. We may do a, uh, a, a little mini basketball game. We're, we're going to see what we can do, but we're going to make it to where whoever's here watching the stream and the show live with us will be the winner for, for this coming yeah. week. Just hop on Twitch for like five minutes, say hi to us. And then you, you know, we'll know that you stopped by and we'll we make sure that you're entered in that. So perfect. Um, so that's going to be kind of, that's going to kind of wrap up the intro guys. Let's go ahead and jump into the show. This is uh, Tailgate Talks Club Red. All right, guys. So, Club Red, Texas Tech. Going to start off with a little bit of basketball. Um, so, the first game of the week was the Iowa State game, right? Wasn't that in the middle of this week, too, as well, right? Yeah. We, and yeah, we, the first game uh, since our last show, yeah. Right, right, right. So that was a massive blowout, honestly. Not much to really else say about that, but it was expected. But we kind of needed that win to propel us uh, going forward. We needed a little bit of a buffer. Uh, I don't want to say buffer game, but, like, we, 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 we needed some more reps in. We needed some more time in, and I think uh, those were games that we were really needing earlier on in the season. Any input about this game? I mean, I know it was almost a 30-point win, but uh, any impact that this had maybe leading into the Baylor game? Nah, you handled business like you should have, so it's kind of good to see. You got a lot of guys, a lot of minutes, uh, again, so that's good to see. Yep. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah, so not not too too much else to say about the the uh, Iowa State game. Again, almost a thirty point blowout. We knew that it was going to be a win there, but at the same time, we were kind of hoping that that give them a little bit more time to gel. I don't know. I guess that that that'd be kind of the the word I'm looking for there. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into the to the 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 meat of the week. Uh, that is the Baylor game. Uh, the the game ended 80, 88 73. I think they were uh, tied. Right in going right into the second second uh, half of the game, um, yeah, we were down by two at half. Yeah, down, down two. by two at I'm half, and then shot before we talk about this, it's gonna be real. <laughs> sure. I'll, I'll be there with you, I'll Dustin. Join you on it. I'll join you on it. Hold on, let me let me pour one out for this. So, um, this game this game seemed like it was going very back and forth. It seemed very solid. Uh, and, and, and we started out well, which has not been our MO 
all season long. We were we were not doing great, but we were keeping toe to toe with the number three seed in the country. Not a bad bad start, honestly. What ended up happening, and I'll let y'all kind of go into the details of it. I, I watched the game, but we uh, will go into the details of it. Um, Brooks, where where did this change in the second half for us? That changed. <laughs> Change when Macio, Macio, I don't know how you pronounce Maceo. it, Mamio, Macio Teague decided that he was never going to miss a three pointer. Mm-hmm. Um, decided it, it, it was pretty much that, I think. You know, it, oh, it was yeah. a slow start. We were down, what, 10 to 2 at the start, 10 to 1. Oh, it was, we were down to like start. 16 to 3, I think. Yeah. Step back. Got off to a real slow start. Kyler Edwards. Came up real clutch in the first half, brought you back. And you were in the game at halftime. And then, yeah, second half, they just, I mean, they were unconscious from three. I mean, yeah. Maceo Teague set a Big 12 record, I think, for threes, going 10 for yeah. 11. Davion Mitchell was like three for three. Jared Butler was like two for three. So all of their dudes were just hitting. And, you know, at that point, there's really not much you can do when every time they get a three, it's going in. Uh, a lot of them were, you know, contested. Threes. It, it's not like he was just hitting just wide open threes, but he was hitting just everything, man. Handed his face. Uh, it didn't matter. Didn't matter. Yeah. It didn't matter. He was hitting some crazy shots. Uh, exactly. And it's just kind of one of those games where you just tip your cap and you're like, all right, you know, the better team won that game. Um, you know, you did some things in the first half that got you confident. And, you know, you battled there for a while in the second half. And then they just... <laughs> At that point, and they broke it open, and there was no turning back from there. Yeah, that's him yeah. right here, Macy. And when you have also one of their other role guys, Mark, or I don't know his first name to be honest, Vital had ten and fifteen rebounds. I mean, he was everywhere, hustling all over the mm-hmm. floor. And honestly, he's the one I hate most on that team because he I hate him. All that stuff. Yeah, but he had a career type game with fifteen rebounds, double double, ten points. Like, yep. They had their. They had Vital and Teague go off on huge games, and then they had their other two guys, Butler and Mitchell, just do what they usually do. Yeah. Yeah, they just blew up on us. Everybody went off on everything. So, Dude, so- you know who Vital, Vital reminds mm-hmm. me of? Reminds me of Draymond Green. Yeah. He's good okay. when everybody – he's great when everybody else around him is great, and then when – if he didn't have, like, Davion Mitchell, Jared Butler, Macy yeah. Teague, like all these other guys – He's probably like a nobody in college. Like he'll still put up the stats, but it won't really mean anything. Yeah, I mean he's an undersized big man that yeah. hustles a lot and knows how to get position as kind of a wide body, but he's not a big dude like tall length wise. Mm-hmm. But yeah, and he, he just hustles he's more than because he's so good and like. So, uh, I guess kind of a random thought in, in in looking at this game is why is it that so many teams have career three point nights against us? Dude, think, it's like something I've been thinking of. What do you got, Dustin? I don't know. I think part of it's that, I mean, the three-point shot, kids are starting to shoot it younger, and then they start shooting it better as the, at a younger age. It's kind of like wide receivers in college. Like, there's so many really good wide receivers now. Yeah. Because they start them younger, they're playing that way younger now. Um, I think that has something to do with it. Like the evolution of the game kind of thing. Better now than they used to be. But I mean, analytics. Like, but it's just like I feel like everybody's hitting higher percentages every time they play us. Like, like sixty-two ah. percent, and this guy going ten for twelve. Uh, he just couldn't miss. Like that was a career night. That's, he has a Sean Marion like shot too. It's it it never looks the, good from the hip. <laughs> and, it, and he would switch it. Yeah, I don't know. This is something I've been thinking of a lot this year. Is we've had a lot of teams yeah. that, like you said, they have their best. Three career point shooting nights against us and you know every now and then it, you know that's an anomaly right like okay cool baylor had this great shooting performance but when it's every single game it feels like at some it's, point i think you do kind of got to look at yourself and be like all right what are we doing here i don't necessarily think it's like our defensive scheme is bad yeah. i just I, I think our rotations are a little slow and we don't necessarily have the guys who can recover right. or Might or maybe so we're, Maybe we're helping too much well, on one end, and then well, it, they reverse it. There's a key to beating us, and it is patience on offense, passing the ball, and also getting offensive rebounds. 
Mm-hmm. And they crushed us on that. But yeah. like he he did have a handful of open threes. Like they had open threes. This yeah, there was so that's yeah, that's what I was about to say. Three. But like the game that that white dude from West Virginia had, he was just making absurd shots. Like those are yeah. the ones you're reading about. But like West Virginia, uh, Oklahoma State had a really good three game against us. Baylor now they just destroyed us from three. Well, like, well, our defensive styling is to like protect the paint, right? We're like always playing protect the middle. So we're there's ways of beating us. And if you have if you have good shooters, you can beat us because we're going to try to keep you from getting inside. Right. And if you miss your three. You know, a three-pointer is one of the easiest shots to offensive rebound on because a lot of the times that ball is going to bounce off the rim in a funky way yeah. if you miss it. And so it's easy for it to bounce out to a guy, a guard who's kind of on the perimeter. And then everybody in basketball knows the easiest three to get is off of offensive rebound. You just kick it once and there's probably a dude wide open because either right. everybody's crashing inside. Yeah, and, and that happens to us a lot. And that's nothing on your defense. That's more on your off, uh, your defensive rebounding. But yeah, it's become a common thing this season. And and I don't necessarily know, you know, that there's shot quality Twitter that's like saying we're one of the top three best sh- uh, shot quality offenses yeah. and best at forcing worst shots on defense. But yeah, I wanted to call that out. Like, we are like wait, 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 wait. What, what is this stat? Team. What is it? It's just like Twitter that's called like shot quality and it tracks like how the game should go based on the shot quality. And so according to this Twitter, yeah, according to the Twitter, we would have won the Baylor game like 76% of the time due to shot quality. And they have this whole ranking thing and we're in the top. There's three teams that are good offense, good defense and shot qualities. And it's Illinois who is is top four and it's Baylor who's top four. And then it's us. (laughs) But we also on Kim Palm offense so high, like I yeah, don't, I don't think you watch like our. I don't. Offense. I don't. I don't. Because we don't pump know. fake out of all the other shots, so and we get a good shot. <laughs> so what I was noticing was happening. So like with the three pointers from Baylor, every time, so uh, like our 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 perimeter defense would shift, right, and they'd shift with the ball, and then they'd kick it literally all the way across. What is it? Yeah, that's the that's the chart. Baylor. Oh my god. <laughs> That's so weird. But then there's also right there, we're right there so, with the top four. So then there's also Ken Palm, right? And Ken Palm is probably like one of the big college basketball things to look at because he tracks uh offensive efficiency, defensive efficiencies, all those stuff. And they even have like a a track on like luck or luckiest teams, unluckiest teams. And yeah. we are like out of the 300 and whatever schools there are in division one college basketball, we're on like the bottom 10 of all of that, of all of the teams. Um, Like we've had one of the most unlucky seasons in college basketball history, like even last year. So there there is some, there's some luck factor to it. And there's some just dudes are hitting ridiculous shots on us. And there's some, our defense is giving up open shots. Like it's a little bit of everything on this. So like, what is what is the what is the the parameters for the the bad luck? Why? why? I mean, I don't know how they Dude's calculate making ridiculous all that. Shots all like the just time. like just people yeah. just playing beyond their level, and it just happens to be against yeah. us all season. Yeah, like a end of the shot clock guy heaves it from you know deep, and shot goes in. That happens yeah. to us like a hundred percent of the time. When it happens to nobody else, uh, it's just like crap like that, and so. Yeah. I mean, it's a struggle. It's, you know, it's the one thing that gives us hope is maybe the stars align and dudes start, stop missing threes, uh, stop getting lucky, stop having officials, you know, hold their hands. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll figure it out. I don't know. So, uh, big 12 season is done. Uh, Texas tech ended up in sixth in the big 12. We finished ahead of Oklahoma. Uh, finished right behind uh, OSU in the standings. Uh, they we ended up with a uh, twenty twenty ranking in the nation, twentieth ranking in the nation. Um, did they give us a prediction as far as our seeding for the tournament? Are we expected a five? Yeah. Okay. Five. So, so we are still expected a five seed. 
We'll see uh, what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just kind of curious and see, seeing if there were any <laughs> good predictions out for it. So, predicted a five seed, finished six in the Big 12. Uh, obviously, a lot of things could have gone better for us this season. Um, I'm trying to find these the Big 12 season awards. Let's see. Let me see if I can find this. Um, I think I can tell them most of them off yeah. my top of my head. Scott Drew yeah, was coach about. of the year. Scott Drew won coach of the year. That's bull. Um, Tate Cunningham was player of the year. Mac McClung, our own, was newcomer of the year. That was an easy unanimous pick. Yeah, um, should have been. And then first team all Big 12 was Cade Cunningham, Austin Reeves, Oklahoma, Jared Butler, Baylor, Davion Mitchell, Baylor. And I can't remember who the fifth guy Derek, was. Derek Culver. Derek Culver, Culver West Virginia. Yep, yep. Uh, Mac made second team. TJ made third, third. team. And no. um, yeah, he made third. And McCuller and Kyler made a honorable mention. Okay. <clears throat> Only so, problem I at least, is like huh. Scott Drew getting coach of the year. Like they were expected to be this good and win the conference. I already gave yeah. it to either the Oklahoma State coach or Bob Huggins. I would have given it to Oklahoma State coach. Yeah, yeah for sure. Now, Oklahoma State coach, you got the player of the conference on your team, number one draft pick. So I kind of dock you some points there. And you also hired his brother to get him. But he well overachieved with that whole team. And so did Bob Huggins, I think. I know they were supposed to finish really well, but I don't think they were supposed to hang around the top 10 in the country for as long as they did most of the year. Yeah. I thought he did a really good job too. So I wanted one of them two to get it. I don't think. Yeah. I think the expectation like, and what happens should factor in. Yeah. When little. you're expected to be the Drew's best in the big 12 and you do it, like what's, there's nothing good about that. Yeah. <laughs> like, cool. Yeah. Good job. But, but uh, so, and uh, I guess kind of a parallel to that though is like, do you feel like and, and kind of cross cross I guess uh, sports here, uh, same sport? Do you feel like LeBron deserves MVP every year, even though you expect him to be great every year? Okay, well that gets into my argument that I think I don't think Cunningham should have won Player of the Year either. I think Jared Butler should have won it because he does a lot more. I'm I'm just, I'm not, I'm not trying to like poke the bear. I'm just kind of curious. I don't necessarily. I I think LeBron. Like you look at the past, and there's definitely some seasons that I'm like, yeah, I think LeBron should have won it that year. But there's some that you can't argue. I do think LeBron is the most valuable to his team, mm -hmm. but that doesn't necessarily mean he's the most valuable that season. Right. Um. Okay. So like it's it's kind of hit or miss. Like I, I believe I believe if the if MVP award was a regular season and postseason, it should always go to LeBron. But it's a regular season award, and sometimes. Somebody has a better better season than them. Okay, and so, but so so I guess uh, I guess kind of the to to go back to it, Baylor doing well and staying well and doing do it doing good the entire season. I don't necessarily think that makes it a great coaching job though, because he already had a great team. I think what makes right. a what makes a good coach is taking a team that people are not yeah. expecting to do well and then exceeding yeah. expectations. When you're Baylor and you have these expectations and you meet them. Yes, that is a good coaching job. And do I think Scott Drew is deserving of an award like that? Yes, but I do think coaches, um, you know, achieved greater heights this year based on how they were projected to be at the start of the year right. to yeah. where they ended up. So it wasn't like, yeah, I, I, I understand what you mean. I was just kind of, I was kind of trying to like, I don't know, kind of yeah, get a, no. kinda, kinda get a feel for like y'all's, y'all's, uh, Y'all's basis of opinion there. And I also agree with Dustin. Like, I, I don't necessarily know that Cade Cunningham was the most valuable player this year for Big 12 because you look at the two tech games that we had against them. Oklahoma State was significantly better as soon as Cade Cunningham left the floor. Oh, well, yeah. They waxed us. They waxed us in that overtime game uh, at home as soon as Cade Cunningham fell, uh, fouled out. They beat us. Cade Cunningham gets his fourth foul in the game there and goes on the bench and then they make their 15, <laughs> 15 you know, you run for the season. Like Jared, but Cade Cunningham leads in scoring Jared Butler's an average of two points behind him. Any other significant stat you want to look at Jared Butler's way ahead of Cade Cunningham. You want to look at rebounds, steals, 
assists, all that good stuff that helps the rest of the team. Mm-hmm. Jared Butler's way better at it. And yeah. that's why I think he should have got it. I mean, I'm not in as big a fuss about that as I am coach of the year because obviously Cade Cunningham's really good. Yeah. But I think that one could have went the other way. Uh, so, um, Big 12 season awards announced. Uh, I, I'm glad that Mac got some recognition at least. I mean, he, he's definitely put in some effort this year. And I, if I, we were I, the SEC or the Pac 12, Mac would have been on the first team. Mac would have been like eight or 10 guys. He'd have been on the top 20 dudes. But I mean, lo- look at how many people we have, you know, in the top 20. Yeah, we only picked 25. Five. Um, <laughs> it's also true. So, big tournament started today. Uh, first game already happened. Kansas beat uh, TCU, blah, blah, blah. Nobody really cares about any of the games today, really. Iowa State and Oklahoma playing, I guess. They're playing right now. It yeah. should be a blowout. 40, 46 to 32 right now, the second half. Um, but uh, as far as our game goes, uh, we're going to be playing tomorrow, 8.30 p.m. We're going to be playing against UT. Do you think uh, Do you think they're going to actually put on the try-hard pants for this, or, uh, or they're going to just be like, we're here for the NCAA tournament, and that's it. I don't know. Dustin, what do you think? It's, it's kind of hard to say. I mean, <clears throat> Coach Beard's teams never, like, have done great at mm-hmm. in Kansas City, so I don't really know. But you always want them to do good. I mean, two years ago when we were on that Final Four run, I just – we already had a, our seed set. Like, mm-hmm. I just wanted us to basically not even show up so we didn't get anybody injured. True. So, but this team, I don't know. We kind of need a game to get back on track after last week, I think. So, at least go up there, play good. Hopefully get a win. If not, come out without injury. Yeah. No, I think and, – and, and I mean, UT is going to be a good game. I think it's going to be good to start trying to kind of figure out – I don't – like – Part of me, like in in the back of my head, because of how good Beard is in the tournament, thinks he has like playbook stuff hidden. Like he's waiting till the tournament to try and like pull all the cards out and stuff. Like I, I don't know. No, th- this this is the thing with this team. And as much as like this team frustrates me, I still love the guys on this team. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's like you you think you know this team could be really good if we just figured a couple things out. The thing that made um, you know, beard so good as those past few teams had the ability to put these runs together in the season, right? That national championship team won nine games in a row in big 12 conference. Right. So, you know, when a team can win nine games in the big 12 in a row that that team's capable of putting together six games to win a national championship. The team before that won several games in a row throughout the season you know, tough games and stuff like that. So you're able to understand like this team can go on a run to maybe, you know, make a push. This current team we have now hasn't been able to do anything of that sort. Like the most we're able to put together is like two or three wins here and there against like lesser competition. But when we play the, you know, top dogs in the big 12, we haven't been able to really do that. Yeah. Um, And and I think that's where this team doesn't have that confidence going into the tournament. Now, do I still think they could put together a run? Yeah, probably. Yeah. You know, I, I, mean, I still trust Beard enough to do that, but I think that Big 12 tournament might be a nice place to do that. The, the stars have kind of aligned here, right? Like, you can, you know you can beat Texas, you beat them twice. Kansas is without two of their uh, – without their big man who torches you every game, McCormick, for this tournament because he's on the COVID, uh, oh, yeah. COVID list. Of course. And they have another player, too. So you could, you know, beat Texas, maybe beat Kansas and feel pretty good about yourself going into the tournament, solidify that you're going to get a five seed, um, maybe push it up to a four if you go on a nice run. But Mm, they have a really good run, I feel like, because they've already played all these teams twice this year, most of them twice this year. Yeah, Um, I would think I would have preferred playing like West Virginia or somebody that you hadn't beat twice yet. That makes me a little nervous because it's always hard to beat a team three times. But the facts. But like Beard Ooh. and McCullough said, it's hard to beat a Big 12 team one time. So <laughs> also true. No, um, I, I it's going to be a good game to watch. I feel like either way. And if we can get the the, the three game sweep on UT this year, I'll still be I'll still be pretty happy with that because then I get to rub it into every Austinites face. Um, so our, our, our first shot bet for this week is going to be the Big 12 Championship game. We will announce that 
once the uh, two teams are known. So be on the lookout on social medias. We'll announce it there. You can make your shot bet pick there. If you end up losing, which I'm pretty sure some of you have, need to be sending us some shot bet videos. Um, yeah, but, I had a friend of mine call us out for being homers. For being homers? And he no. voted, he voted for Baylor. And I said, I was like, hey, I'd rather take a shot for us losing right. than take a shot because I bet on us to lose. I, <laughs> I will bet against Tech sometimes, but I will never bet for Baylor. I, I, I'll just put it that way. I, I will never bet for Baylor. I, I can't. Uh, we've already discussed it enough. But that that's that was the scenario for me. Uh, but yeah, big big time, big time home fans of the double T there. Um, so just be on the lookout for the shot bet game again. Big Twelve Championship game going to be in a couple of days here. Uh, just be on the lookout for the social media posts. That way you can get your vote in. That way you can join us on the shot bets. Uh, so. That's going to kind of wrap up basketball for right now. We'll have more for you next week uh, going into the tournament. But uh, mostly, be on the lookout for Monday night whenever we'll be doing some of the bracket stuff after they announce everything uh, Sunday. Um, yeah, and we'll be promoting that on all our social medias too. So Right. Um, so we'll, we'll annoy the shit out of you with it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure you guys can't wait. Um, so Texas Tech Baseball had a great weekend. Went uh, 3-0. and over in the uh, over at the uh, Minute Maid Park in 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 uh, in Houston, um, good weekend. I, I was actually I I forgot about it until Sunday Saturday night, and then I was like, oh, let's go catch the Mon- uh, Sunday game, and completely slept in way too late to go catch it. They they had a good run. Uh, they they beat Texas State, beat Sam Houston State, and then they beat Texas A and M Corpus Christi. That one was a little bit of a closer game, but. Uh, they did well. Uh, good matchup. Any any kind of uh, highlights or anything we need to kind of uh, look at in these wins or in these uh, in this closer win at the end against Corpus? I haven't watched any games honestly, but just following stuff on Twitter. Josh Young is crushing the baseball. Jace. Jace. <laughs> is he better than Josh? I can't even keep him straight. Um, just as as we're talking about him, he just hit where we were tied three to three in the bottom of the eighth, and guess who hit a double Dude. to give us two run lead? Nice. Jace Young. <laughs> oh, he's good. Nice. Yeah, he's good. He's really good. Cal uh, Conley's pretty good too. Uh, Conley's hitting. Try, we're hitting good. On. Hitting good. So so what what is uh so far what do you think might be uh might be, I guess, our, our Achilles heel. Pitching. Pitching? Okay, because I thought we were really deep on that. I thought we had like 30 pitchers and stuff. And We're, we're deep on it, but... We don't have the experience. Yeah. Oh, maybe that's it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it seems like in a lot of these games lately, we'll get leads and, you know, you have, like, for instance, tonight we have a 3-1 lead and we put in a guy, and, you know, in two innings he gives up that lead. Yeah. Right. Um. And so, you know, last night, too, we had similar issues. Uh, it's just keeping those leads. You need guys who can come in and throw strikes. And we always seem to have guys who like to get walk batters and hit batters and put guys on the base paths. But yeah. I think that's probably our Achilles heel. Our, our yeah. hitting's been pretty good and timely. Yeah, yeah, it seems, it seems well. Uh, I, was, I was watching some of the Corpus Christi game for a little bit there. They had it on, like, the Astros Facebook page. I tried to kind of share that for people to watch. Um, and yeah, um, Corpus Corpus came out swinging early. They they came out batting pretty hard. Uh, and then I mean, like we were staying right with them. Like they never got like a big lead <laughs> on us. But I kind of noticed that like our, our our starting pitching and the the was was giving up some early hits. Our starting pitching has been all right though so far to start this season. Like our it's not really our starting pitching that's been our weakness. It's kind of been once you go to the bullpen in the fifth sixth inning. Yeah. Like, do okay. you have somebody who can come in and like shut them down and keep the keep the lead? And so far this season, it's been all over the place there. Cool. So, but currently um, we're up five to three on Gonzaga in the top of the ninth. So we're we'll take it. We'll looking take to it. get this midweek series oh, sweep. We will take more wins. Um, where are we ranked right now? I think uh, uh, top uh, ranking uh, is number nine. Okay. No. I think I, I was looking and saw, I saw one of the guys from baseball post like something about it. Um, so yeah, baseball rankings are weird. Cause there's like 
thousands of different polls. So <laughs> we should do our own. Yeah. Maybe the tailgate so talks baseball. So rankings. Like there's seven different polls and I'm like, yeah, what if I just release one? Like here's <laughs> yeah. my poll. Um, so we're, we're in the middle of the, uh, Gonzaga, uh, series uh that is that is at home at dan law so if you have time make sure to go check them out go swing by the games there's another one um tomorrow night this weekend no oh no there's a, uh, this, this weekend this going on right now sorry that no i'm getting mixed up on the date normally i thought they were posting this live we got a 12 game home stretch yep yep there's a there's actually quite a bit going on here there's so many games at home so uh next game is going to be friday 6 30 uh at dan law there's obviously the one going on right now um, go check them out. Uh, they, they've been a lot of fun. I've always loved going to the tech baseball games. Always good. Crowds, always good. Baseball teams, obviously very good. Uh, Friday, they're going to be starting a four game series against UConn. So definitely go swing by and check that out. If you're in town or available to, um, and capacity is opening up. So they're also true. I forgot so, about that. Today's yeah, the they day. They didn't say like what exactly, but they said we'll let more in. Hmm. I wonder. So I don't know what that means. All right. Um, and then, uh, obviously the week after is whenever we have our first rank game since the opening of the season, that's going to be against number 20, Oklahoma state. We'll talk more about that on next week's episode, but just something to kind of be on the lookout for. Uh, so let's go ahead and, uh, wrap up the club red. We're going to jump over to shot bets. That's going to be it for, for the double T talk for now. So this is tailgate talk shot bets. We're going streaky. So, uh, sorry about the delay there for those that are watching live. Uh, the first game that we had was Texas Tech at Baylor. Um, obviously, with us having our own Texas Tech segment. We went the full sweep and all picks Texas Tech on this one because none of us ever want to vote for Baylor on anything. And uh, Baylor ended up winning that game. So, uh, cheers, guys. Again, uh, I, I know I have another shot bet owed, but it's fine. Yeah, take it. Mm. Woo. I bored it a while ago. Oh, God. I needed to take that now. I'm fine. So, <laughs> uh, the uh, we've talked about that Baylor game enough. We're going to kind of move on to the next part. Uh, the second shot bet was Team LeBron versus Team Durant. Uh, LeBron, uh, LeBron's all-star team dominated literally all four quarters. Uh, that was not even close. I was kind of hopeful thinking like, you know, the, the Team Durant was going to play with a bit of a chip on their shoulder, but there was, there was, there was no contest. This was a James, James Harden ate all those chips. So yeah, yeah, he, he did. <laughs> he, he, he took one step and it was not. It, it, it was it was a blowout, but good for for the charities. Uh, the the I forgot what, what which charity did did uh, Team LeBron have? Do y'all remember? Yeah, I don't remember off the top of my head. They they ended up with like one point five million donated because of the four quarter wins. They still donated. Uh, I think it was the Thurgood Marshall College Fund was the other one. They they still got five hundred thousand. It was a good game, but it was definitely Team LeBron the entire way. And so I took the loss. Dustin Brooks took the win on that one. Uh, yeah, so they get the sweep this week. They win both bets. I owe two shots. I've paid those. I think we, we all took our Texas Tech shot earlier. Uh, so we are all clear. Make sure, guys, if you did vote for Team Durant or if you did vote for Texas Tech to send us those shot bet videos. Again, we will be pulling those together. Excuse me. Oh, the shot. Um, <laughs> still, still biting me back. Jesus. Uh, we'll be pulling together those shot bet videos. And uh, we will be using those for later on tailgate talks or tailgate crashers entries. Um, so I guess the, the, the main story in sports this week is in the NFL. Uh, everybody's been talking about it literally since the, the, the second it happened. And uh, we're going to we're going to go ahead and jump over to uh, to a football discussion. And we'll talk a little bit about the Dak Prescott contract. So, Dak Prescott, what was it? 164? 160 million, four years, 
with 128 million, I believe, guaranteed. I, I got to look up the exact. Yeah, you're amounts. taking all my stats. Um. Oh, it, it's it's uh, that one's out there for everybody. Um. I know you're taking all my stats. <laughs> is that is that Play your stat music. of the week already? Yeah, it's, everybody it's, wants to talk about all those numbers. Okay. Yeah, numbers. All right. All right. So apparently, I'm I'm taking Dustin's stat of the week by quoting what Play was part of the main thing. <laughs> Take that for data. All right. Tell tell the people what they didn't know. Dak signed for a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> Four God, years, I, 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 million. I hate you sometimes. I hope <laughs> you know that. Okay, go. Go, go. 126 million guaranteed. And then really the best thing they did out of it was they made it a $66 million signing bonus. With seventy-five million by the end of December this year, which is the most like anybody's ever going to make as an NFL player in its first year of a contract, like in a yeah. one-year contract. So huge numbers. Um, Dak obviously, I earned it. Played played the game right with the Cowboys. Uh, this this saves the Cowboys money by not going the route of. Paying him like thirty some million per year, and now it's only like twenty two per year. So he does save them some cap room there, um, but he's also taking like twenty one percent of the cap. So that's gonna be an issue going forward. Big big chunk of the cap. Um, so I, I kind of I, I'm not I'm not here to bash on it. I'm actually happy that Dak got paid. Uh. I know, I know the the look on the faces because of the text that I sent earlier in the week. I'm happy that he got paid, and, and I, the tweet. I, 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 y'all know my stance on on contracts, and I, I hope that Dak serves it out because he got paid well and extremely well. And honestly, um, he got paid so much due to the market, but mm-hmm. he got paid more due to the market than due to his skill level because he's not the second best quarterback in the league. He's not. Like there, there's probably at least five to seven ahead of him, in my opinion. But, he's around that range, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But he's in the top ten, and he, he's not he's not bottom of the top ten. He's he's like kind of like seven, eighth, somewhere around there. And and that's just my opinion on it. But but due to the market, I thought a long time ago that they should have paid Dak for like a six year, thirty million a year contract. Like literally right after his what twenty sixteen year, whenever he broke out, like had a really good season, something like that. I thought that's whenever they should have done it. Yeah, and so if they, they would have paid him two years ago, like the Carson Wentz Philadelphia deal. Yeah, you would have got out cheaper. Yeah, but then you could also be in the situation that Philadelphia is in, and you're paying more for a quarterback that plays for the Colts than the Cowboys are paying for Dak. Yeah, and um, Dak's is only a four year deal, so. Oh, dude, yeah, he, he you're not necessarily good. in the woods if all of a sudden he's like. Right. not good anymore or something like that you're yeah. like uh you you can buy time but yeah. yeah if you're saying he's a top 10 quarterback you got to pay him because you, you, you have to keep him how that, hard that is, is it to find a quarterback that can win you games in this league it's really hard exactly yeah that. And like at how much can they win you games because i remember back before the tony romo days and when the cowboys didn't have a quarterback and they were playing guys like drew henson and quincy carter yeah and rough yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, so, look at all, look at all these franchises. Yeah. Well, and, and there's you got to keep them. And yeah, if he's a top eight guy, yeah, he, he him, needed to get paid. I just, I, he, I don't, I think it was just the timing of the market to where that, that's why he's the second highest paid. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah. it's how it's how the quarterback market has worked yeah. since yeah. Um, since uh, Flacco got his deal. Oh it's just God. like it's if you got a guy, guy who if you got a guy who's decent. Like you're, you're, he's gonna get yeah. money because like it's Jackson so hard. Yeah. Josh Allen are about to get broken and, off next. Oh yeah, uh, Josh uh, Allen is like my 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 <laughs> last little 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 Dallas. I guess a uh, tip of the hat uh, for tonight is probably gonna be that that Dak as as a as a personality uh, has been damn good for being the face of the Dallas Cowboys as in yeah, he's, he's kept it great. he's kept it quiet he's kept it low key literally the only bit of scandal that he's had in the least bit was that little tiny party he threw where people weren't wearing a mask in the middle of covid that's literally it that's the that's that's the worst of Dak Prescott really like okay fine pay him his fucking yeah. money 
get it done with. He, he, he earned the money. I'm cool with it. I think it was a little uh, – if, if Jerry would have been smarter and done it way earlier like he should have because he kept saying Dak is our guy, then he should have paid Dak earlier and they would have made it out with a better deal. But now they're kind of eating up a shit ton of cap space, and I don't know how that's going to play out in the long run. Yeah, that's the only problem is they're eating up 22% of cap space that's second behind Mahomes so, at 23%, and it's like – that's it's not bad, but because of how they structured it. But it's also like, all right, now you have to try to figure out how to build the rest of the team around. I think it's uh, what is it? Is it is it seven players on there that at some point or another they were all the highest paid contract in there? Yeah, they signed a lot of dumb contracts the last few years. So they got some seven. of them well earned, but some of them not. Like Jalen Smith, definitely not. Marcus Lawrence, as soon as he signed that. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry to say it, but Zeke Elliott shouldn't have gotten his deal. Zeke shouldn't have. Which they'll probably ride that out for one more year and then probably cut him to save I, I I think that he has to do well this year. He can't have another 65, 65 yard average year with that, uh, with, with staying on. Yeah. The they team. signed a lot of dumb contracts in the last couple years. So, but uh, they, they, they need an offensive line. They need to, they need to keep it at the high level that they had a couple years ago. And I think that that needs to be their focus in the draft. And I think that that needs to be the focus in, in the, the rest of any kind of trades that they can pull off. Uh, but uh, good on Dallas, honestly. The, good good for Dak. Uh, again, I'm happy for him getting paid. Uh, Jerry Jones is willing to do it to, to be the headline for a couple of weeks. Then by all means, go for it. Um, I think Rex, the Cowboys. On him? Yeah, yeah. Do what? Do you have you anything, anything on the topic? Bad. No, I just I think it was something that you had to do. Think you're dumb if you're not going to pay him. Uh, you're going to trust your, uh, you know, like a rookie quarterback or something coming in. Yeah, that's the thing. You're also in a situation. Well, who are you going to get? Yeah, yeah. And they and weren't in, they so, weren't in a good enough position in the draft to like pull somebody there. It's like it, I mean I don't know how many tougher positions there are in sports to play besides corner uh, besides quarterback. You know, it's a tough position, and if you can find somebody who can win you games, he was one of the. He was like on a track to break all sorts of records last year before he got hurt. Like it wasn't his fault that they were losing last year because he was putting up crazy numbers. They had no defense that could stop him. So he's a good quarterback. He it's not like he, you're signing this to a guy who uh is bad. So I, I think it's it's he's worth the money. It's only four years, so he can maybe make another good deal oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, down plays, the road. So he plays a I mean a good for the next three, four years. Yeah, he'll get another contract when he's 31. Yeah, so, he's definitely – it's definitely, I think, a win for both both sides. So. so, Dustin, way too early prediction. How far do they make it with this team? Well, good thing is, is they're in a division that's – Bad. Sucks. Um, They have a great offense. They have but, all kinds of weapons. What is it? What, one playoff win in 20 years? But – they need defense, and so mm-hmm. got to fix that that stuff. Did we finish that game out, Brooks? Yeah, W Texas Tech North. five to four. There we go. Take so, the I mean, dub. We should still be the favorites in the division, right? Oh, but Washington, so. who doesn't know what they're doing at quarterback, Philadelphia, who's transitioning in a lot of places. The Giants are kind of maybe on the upswing, but they obviously. think they know what they're doing with quarterback. <laughs> Daniel Jones is their quarterback, so you yeah. definitely have the best quarterback figured out yeah that's good the rest of it on the defensive side eh, not so good so we gotta we gotta you, fix a lot on that side to see what happens do you think we see a divisional championship or no sure i'll call that okay all right so at least a couple at least a couple playoff wins this year we'll see i, I didn't it, say that huh you didn't say anything about playoff wins Oh, okay. How many? Okay, fine. How many play? How many? Championship. How many? How many regular season wins? Okay, conference championship. That's what I meant to say. Do you think they'll make that? I'm not willing to go that far yet. We'll talk about that when we get to like <laughs> okay. December. Oh, I, I was trying to get something out of you for it, but I won't. You apparently, did. I'm you not got gonna... divisional championship. <laughs> okay. Out of all right. All right. All right. So, um, obviously, that's the biggest news in the NFL right now. Not too much else going on. A couple of trades. I know uh, the the Tampa Bay Buccaneers re-signed two. They re-signed Godwin, and then they re-signed somebody else. Uh, they got Levante David re-signed today, yeah. and they're working on Shaq Barrett yeah. also. So, 
Tom Brady's working on restructuring his contract to take a less salary cap hit. <laughs> They're trying to get another star in there like Odell Beckham. I don't know. They're trying to get everybody. Yeah, and there's people that are trying to get there too. Just to, Hell, oh yeah, they God. are. Why would um, you not? It's like trying to go join LeBron back in the heat days. Like everybody was taking pay cuts to true. go. Also true. So, um, interesting week with, with, uh, with the signing there. I think that that's obviously been all over the news. So, uh, again, good on Dak. Meh on the Cowboys. I think that they should have done a lot earlier, but it's fine. They're done with it. It's over with. You got your guy. You got him sealed in. You're, you're not pissing him off with another franchise tag. So, good on them. Not a bad signing. Should have been done a long time ago. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump to the NBA, and then uh, that'll kind of wrap up the end of the show. Uh, let's see. What do we have here? Yeah, we got a couple of things to talk about. Obviously, the uh, All-Star game. We got a, a pretty decent trade that happened. Got prize pools. Or not prize pools. The uh, win pool updates. So this is uh, NBA. Oh, that's a that's a big a big little throw in, Raj. Sorry, I missed that. Yeah, Titans cut Malcolm Butler. Um, Titans cut another starter on defense too. No kidding, dude. Yeah, I don't know who they cut Malcolm Butler and somebody else. They're they trying some, to cut cap space. They need to make some big changes there. The cap, the cap went down like eight percent. So there's gonna be a lot of sacrifices in the next couple of days. Uh, yeah. Jesus. Um. Oh, I guess maybe COVID related. I don't know. Kenny yeah. Vaccaro is what he said. Ah. Not, I don't know who that is. Um, Texas alone. Uh, okay. Um, so, obviously, NBA shotgun. What are we doing? What does that mean? I don't know. I was thinking of like a t- title that evolves around tailgates that we could, you know, a quick <laughs> intake of NBA news. The oh. NBA shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll go with the take. I like it. All right. So, NBA shotgun. I, I wish I had a sound for that, like a, a beer opening or something. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, so Team LeBron dominates Team Durant. Any quick input on this? Uh, I, it was foreseeable. Team Team LeBron is four and zero now. Uh, I, I wasn't surprised. Yeah. By it, honestly, I was I just that make it was kind of fun to watch. I mean, it's just a bunch oh, of oh yeah, the under, open the, threes. The, but the it was fun to watch like Luca and Jokic doing stuff together. And I think. The first time they've played together, so it's kind of fun. Yeah, like, that, interaction. That's what I was gonna say. My favorite part was seeing like the court. videos, the videos of like Steph and LeBron together. Like that kind of made me happy just seeing like how much they enjoyed playing yeah. with each other. Imagine them like if they were on the same team because LeBron with his passing, just being able to just give it to uh, Steph wherever he wants it, so he could take that three. Yeah, but yeah, it was really fun watching like Steph and Dame like try to see who could like who outdo each other. For- <laughs> I'll pull up from half court. Watch this. Like they're back to back to in the first half where Dame hit from from half and then Steph hit. Oh my god! Stupid. It was, that was fun. so much fun. It's yeah, this pass by LeBron. The yeah, dunk there it is. Halftime and having like a very <laughs> fast dunk contest that was kind of nice. There was some good stuff there too. Obi had some good good dunks in there. I thought I thought Steph. Uh... I feel like Steph deserved. I, I I know Giannis went was it sixteen for sixteen. I think it was something like that. He he, he didn't miss yeah. a single shot, but you know obviously he was he was Dunk City. But I I thought I Steph was MVP. he had a couple threes, huh? He had yeah, a couple yeah. threes. Yeah, I know he had yeah. some shots. Big shots. There's a lot of Dunk Dunk City on that one. But I thought I thought Steph was MVP for the for the uh, All Star Weekend because he won the three point contest. That's easy. Yeah, yeah, but he, he still won it. And, uh, then, and then it should he, have been him versus Dame three. That would have been awesome. That would have been good. Da- Dame, Dame with the little like, like the little watch tick. Backing up and just like you get five shots from here and then back up some more and then just keep backing up. <laughs> Until you're on the other side. And then like even the shot that Dame hit to like, finish the game was like one dribble past half court, pull up, oh, yeah. buried it. Like I don't know. It was just fun to see them put on that kind of display so, of shooting. That's just somebody brought it up this week. Uh, they were like, people are getting so good from the three point line and shooting from beyond the arch, like way beyond it. That uh, I think it was Chris something. It was on Fox Sports. Oh my god! And he was, he, 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 yeah, he was talking about. He's like, don't be surprised if they throw on a four point line. I'm like, they're not gonna throw on a four point mark. There's no chance. Mm-hmm. 
there there might be if it gets like, ridiculous. I mean, I I do think a shot like that maybe should count for more, but you know who know. knows? The, the three ball has changed the game so much, and people want to bitch about it and complain. Oh, this isn't the best ball. But, man, it's more valuable. So why wouldn't you want to be amazing at the shot that counts for more than a freaking yeah, please. mid-range? People are like, oh, I missed the mid-range. Oh, oh. Did you? Did you? Did you miss the pull-up jump? Did you really miss a freaking little, elbow little, little, jumper? Little jump shot? No, you <laughs> don't. Watch God. You don't miss it. You're just yeah. old. You're, you're just old. Watch. Get over it. Uh, Come no, on, that, I, man. I feel like that's the same kind of people that would bitch about Moneyball and baseball, like them them buying cheap players that they know are going to get a bunch of hits that they need. Like, same thing. Like, you go for the statistics. Stati- statistically, if you shoot more threes, you're going to win more games. You're going to score a bunch of more points. Sorry. Yeah, it counts for more than elbow jumper Demar Derozan over here. No kidding. Um, so next big news that we need to look at uh, for the NBA, and this was not that was not a quick take at all, but it's fine is uh, Blake Grit. Nah, it's fine. Uh, I'm a sorry. slow chugger. <laughs> it's, it's, it's our show. We can literally do whatever the hell we want. Blake Griffin to the Nets. And not only that, but there's talk of another star trying to end up at the Nets. Um, Don't call Andre Drummond a star. Come on. Well, okay. <laughs> Somewhat big name. He fine. could help the team a lot, though. Like, yeah. I, 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 especially with, with Durant sitting so, many, <laughs> so much time out. Yeah, because we all know Kevin Durant can't win a championship unless he has like four other All Stars on his team. So, but they're all <laughs> wanting to go there. That's the thing. Uh, well, because so, it's a buyout, so it's like easy. Yeah, but like, okay, so Blake Griffin to the Nets. What do you think the impact of this is? I, I don't think it's huge. I think he's been a little bit on the downslope. He's been he he shifted his game since he injured himself to like a three point shooter kind of guy. Uh, I I don't know. Uh, I don't know the impact of this, Brooks. What do you think? His shooting numbers are a career low this year. He's shooting like really low from three, shooting a really low overall field goal percentage, hasn't dunked in forever. I don't, I don't know what he is, um, but this is definitely like an opportunity for him where he's not going to be the one that's asked to provide like everything for you. Yeah, like he literally can just go out there and if he can give him fifteen minutes a game of like decent basketball. And that's that's really all they want. He doesn't have to carry an offensive load. Um, if he can prov- provide a little good defense and you know a little offensive spark here and there, okay. you know it's a good fit for him. Uh, he'll definitely has a chance to go win a ring, and I think that's what he wants. So yeah, that's all they need from him. I mean, he's not All Star Blake Griffin anymore, but I think it's just good to bring in a good, experienced, smart player, veteran, big time veteran into this. I mean. He's never been past like the second round of the playoffs. So you're not bringing in a championship type guy, but you're bringing in a guy with a lot of years and good experience and a good player at one point. So yeah, it can't hurt to add good, smart players to your team to try to make a run. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of, that's kind of it for the biggest NBA news for this week. Um, obviously we're, we're on second the second half, half of the season. Yep. 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 Second half of the season. Tonight. Going to be wrapping up. Um, uh, going into the playoffs, which we'll obviously have plenty of coverage for, but second half of the season starting, and uh, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, they had Dallas, San Antonio playing tonight. Dallas won 115, 104. W for me, <laughs> damn it. Great. Um, know, right? Great. Good well, Lord. We... yeah, so change my um, total to one, change my total to 116, Arlie. I'm gonna leave it at 115 and hope that you end up with a <laughs> negative win somehow. Uh, so midseason <laughs> win pull updates. Uh, Dustin's at ninety seven. I'm at an oh, even one hundred. Coming. Sorry, you're. I, I can't hear you in the in the in the double digit range. Um, I'm at one hundred wins, and Brooks is at one fifteen. Uh, sixteen. One sixteen. One fifteen. <laughs> I'm not counting it. One sixteen. He's at one sixteen. Uh, Dustin's slowly catching up to me. Uh, little chipping away, little by little. Uh, Brooks has still got a 15 game lead and I don't, I don't know how that's going to end it, but, uh, maybe second half of the season, they'll hit a slump and stop winning games. I'm kind of hoping so that way this race becomes a little bit more interesting. Um, so we were talking about this a little bit before the show, uh, and we're going to kind of do a little bit of a, uh, a redraft. So like teams that we would have picked that we didn't get a chance to, or, uh, teams that are at the bottom of our, win pull totals 
Um, it's just kind of like where where you went wrong in your draft, basically. It's yeah, like, who, yeah, who you who you picked that maybe you should have picked another team in that spot. Now, knowing now what we know about these teams, knowing about their records, knowing about how yeah. good they are, how bad they are. Because at the beginning of the season, this is all a projection. Now it's, hey, I know that team's not good. <laughs> so nice. it's just kind of like a where you went wrong type of deal. So, Dustin, you want to start? Yeah. Um, obviously, the Nets were a good pick for me first round. And now they're just getting stronger and stronger. They're probably going to take over the East at some point. Um, they're looking good. My, like, meh teams – I mean, the Blazers are decent. The Heat are coming along. The Celtics are coming along. What I'm hurting there is injuries have killed me the first half of the season. Mar- Marcus Smart should be coming back tomorrow for the Celtics. That's a big addition. Jimmy Butler had been out for the Heat for a long time. So those two guys coming back to those teams should help them get going in the East. My, like, big mess up apparently is the Pelicans suck. I'm so, a little surprised by that, honestly. I mean, it's that's t- where tough, my mess up was. But... The Pelicans really s- just not going anywhere, and they're they're weighing me down because my other teams they they struggled at first, but now they're getting healthy. They're doing what they're supposed to. Yeah, Pelicans are just whatever. Which sucks because I mean, you know, obviously Zion is 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 uh, hell of a talent and a lot of fun to watch, but. I don't know who to blame because obviously I haven't watched any Pelicans games. No, nah, nobody, <laughs> nobody, nobody has. No, no. Nobody has. Surprise. I, I've seen Pelicans highlights of Williamson and that's it. I'm taking in copious amounts of college basketball and mm. like zero NBA basketball. <laughs> I sold a Nikhil Alexander Walker top shot today for like 36 bucks. So Sick. <laughs> You're making big moves, Shout out Nikhil. <laughs> I, I had a guy. I had a buddy of mine who, uh, after the show, he wrote me. He's like. Your, your your boy made how much off it? Of, he's he's got a big gambling problem. He's like, your boy made how much off of that? I was like, don't 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 do it, man. I'm not I'm not gonna talk about it. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's definitely taking a turn now. I mean, I still have that money, and I've paid a little bit more off of it, but um, it's now the craze is in on and it, so I don't think it's as good. It's it's mm-hmm. gonna trickle trickle down. Um, um, but let's go let's go to my teams real quick. Yeah, yeah, and then we'll we'll. Finish oh, off with uh, go for it. Arlie. We'll go in reverse order of how we pick the teams. How about that? Um, I ain't got nothing wrong. <laughs> yeah. All right. Next. <laughs> All right. Cool. Uh, that was a good take. All right, guys. So, uh, now you talk uh, about say, you Can I, can I kick him from the? I think I can kick him from the say, Zoom call, guys. Hold on. The sons. <laughs> I will say a pinnacle part of this for me was. I mixed up the draft order and I was going to pick the Nuggets and it was Arlie's turn and Arlie picked the Nuggets. And then right after that, I picked the Utah Jazz who have been the best team, the best team in the Uh NBA so far this year. So that worked out for me. But yeah, my last pick was the Phoenix Suns and they are second place in the Western Conference right now. So that worked out really well. You're struggling. Uh, Bucks and Clippers were great. My worst team right now is the Mavericks, and they're good. you know they're starting still to good. They're, they're making a little run here. That you know they started off kind of slow. Injuries. Porzingis was out for a lot while to start off the season, but yeah. Um, I mean, I, I I did really good on this. So. I'm trying to. I, I don't remember <laughs> all the all the teams I have. Honestly, I know I have Sixers. I know I have Lakers. Lakers. And then you did Nuggets. I know I have Nuggets, but the who's Raptors? the bottom two? Okay, that's what it was. Raptors, blah, and the Wizards. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was whenever. Uh, yeah, I thought Wizards were going to be a little bit better this year. I thought Westbrook was going to at least carry a couple, but yeah, you're yeah. on Team Westbrook, dog. I I thought I thought I thought uh, he was going to do a little bit more there. Um, you didn't you didn't get traded to Washington with him. You know that, right? <laughs> I know, I know, but. Uh, like like he was able to carry small market Oklahoma City for quite a while into like some decent runs and a couple of wins. So I thought he might pull off you know somewhat similar results. And that's, that was a that's a better franchise than the Wizards. And it they, is. They're able to but, develop players a little bit better than the Wizards are. 
It is, but at the same time, I was, I was, it was him by himself. So I was like, he, he might well, recreate recreate the magic. I don't know. But it was a late pick are for definitely me. one of the most, like, probably bummer teams so far this year. Because you, you do think in the East with Bradley Bill and Russell Westbrook that yeah. that should be at least a 500 team. For sure. Yeah. Um, and – well, it just hasn't been nah, not the case, but maybe a hey, second half of the season might be a whole different game. Some people want to try and step it up to make it into the playoffs might change for me. I, I, I still, I think the only team that I might swap out if I had to repick or redraft, I think would probably just be the Raptors because even though they're in eighth place there, I don't think that they'll have enough to kind of do a long stretch. I don't know. I, I don't mind. I, I, I still feel validated by the picks I had. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, and, you look at our teams, and there's only one in the top five in each conference that wasn't drafted, and that is the surprising New York Knicks right now. Yeah. Um, but I mean, other than that, really, did somebody grab the Hornets? No, I mean, oh. I said that in the top five seeds oh, on my bad, my each bad. side. I missed that. Um, um, but yeah, I mean, there's a couple I, of surprises right now, but for the most part, yeah, the Wizards and the Pelicans have been, you know, are are the lowest teams in each division. Other than that, I mean, you know, I mean, all our teams have been are right around the top, so it's not like anybody completely botched it. It's just well, our and, last picks are kind of picking on a team to rise or fall, and yeah, that was kind of that was kind of the whole whole length of the draft there so it was good uh i don't mind again how, how mine turned out i got 76ers i got lakers uh, those are kind of my, my main main two big dogs there um obviously nuggets might have a deep run in the end there but who knows um i think lakers are kind of kind of turning it up a little bit i don't know if the 76ers Sixers are going to be able to hold off the nets for too long uh i think that they're just going to slowly kind of get stronger as the season goes on and as they figure out their stars roles in the in the lineups there uh, well, we'll see how it plays out. I, I just saw a post that said uh, Embiid passed uh, LeBron for uh, most likely to win MVP, uh, which Embiid's had a hell of a season. I don't know where that's been for the last couple of years, but hell of a season this year. But um, no, that, that'll kind of wrap up, I guess, kind of the win pool thing. Uh, the shot bet game for this week out of the NBA is going to be the Clippers versus the Mavs. That no, is going to be... huh? You skip the uh have any of our predictions any changed? of our predictions changed from the beginning of the year oh, I thought beginning gonna... of the year at the beginning of the year i think we all predict uh predicted the lakers to make the to win the finals but there were some other picks dustin had luca winning the mvp i had kevin durant you had um anthony davis AD. yeah and that's um, not gonna happen anymore rookie of the years and stuff like that so i was just want to check in anybody feeling anything different on any of those uh obviously katie's Anthony, not gonna win mvp Lamelo looks really good for rookie yeah he does yeah. i uh, i predicted that too i i could see um, that happening yeah. uh i don't think kevin, luca's like, gonna take mvp but, yeah i think uh, all of our guys are out on the mvp because yep. kevin durant hasn't played in a while anthony davis is gonna be out for a while and luca while putting up great numbers just doesn't have the luca's still like yeah he's like a like what There's, fifth? The top Sixth? three guys, and like Luca's fourth, but he's out. Yeah, Luca has yeah. the best chance of winning it. But I, I, I do think Embiid seems like a likely guy. If yeah. the Sixers keep having this kind of season, I think he's probably going to win it. But yeah, yeah. Um, other than that, I mean, if Maybe Anthony Embiid Davis, and LeBron, hmm? Anthony, what would what, you say, what? Dustin? Uh, I just heard Dustin say something randomly, LeBron. Between Embiid and LeBron. Oh, yeah. I, I think that's going to be the runaway. But uh, obviously, we're only halfway through the season. So it's really kind of hard to say, like, too, too much more. Uh, but up to this point, I do think it's definitely been those two. Um, the problem with the Lakers now is AD's out. And they're just – they're not the same team when AD's not in. No. And, and so they, they've kind of, like, fallen a little bit since his injury. Yeah. And if he's not healthy, like, that's a completely different race now in the yeah. West because – uh, is there any talk about when he's going to be coming back? Um, originally it was like a four week, four weeks out. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, but I, it's an Achilles thing. So like, they're not going to rush him back. Yeah. And they don't necessarily need him during the regular season. They're going to no. with this team they have now, if everybody's healthy, they're going to 
be a top four team in the West, and that's all they need. Yeah. Um, so it just yeah, the, make I, sure he's I, make I sure he's healthy. But you you and you know LeBron better than anybody. He's not going to try and just settle for a fourth seed. He's going to be pushing and getting more minutes the last like the end of the season coming around. Oh, LeBron's never cared seed. about seed. He's yeah. never cared about seed. He's never cared about seed. He took the Cavs to the finals on like a four seed. So, um, and home court doesn't matter this year, really. So, um, we'll see. There's no uh, fans. <laughs> it's not like a full stadium. So, it's not also true. It's not all that important. But so, I mean, he'll push them to get wins, but it's not like, it's not like they're going to tank. They're going to be all right. But yeah, yeah. yeah I'm just, He's not going to overdo it because he didn't, never cares about the regular season. He only cares about postseason. Also true. All right, guys. Um, so, again, uh, I know I kind of touched over it earlier, but I did miss this little part. Uh, shot back game this week. Cliffs Mavs. Uh, Monday. That is going to be Monday, March 15th. Um, I will take the Clippers on this one. I think that they're still kind of finding their ground, but uh, – I, I think that they're going to take this win. I don't know. That, that, that'll be my bet. It's Clips. Uh, oh, Brooks, Brooks, who do you got? Yeah, this is the start of where we're we're going to start doing like our our guys against our guys. So these are two of my wins pull teams. Okay. So I'm going to defer to Dustin first. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I pick Clippers. Pick the. Huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know the easy pick is the Clippers. Mm-hmm. Hey, you took the easy pick in LeBron, so hold on. I actually got my 30-second video in on time, so. I got it in on time. <laughs> it didn't take me three days to get it in. I just didn't do it early. No, there's a difference. I'll go, I'll go Mavs just to be a homer. All right. So? I'm going Mavs, too. <gasps> <gasps> <laughs> it's all right. I'm, I'm, I, my, my record has been so bad since uh, basketball started. Like, uh, I, I, I would probably pick against what I'm picking right now, anyways. I bet, yeah. I, I think like the Mavs honesty, are starting to find their groove. They've been playing really good as of late. Yeah. Clippers have kind of been, I don't know, they, they haven't been great as of late. So I, I think, uh, give me the Mavs in this one. Sure, sure. Luca. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, I think that's gonna wrap up the episode for us. Uh, again, um, yeah, be, be on the lookout for a lot of the stuff that we have going on as far as the tournament and whatnot. Um, let's go ahead and do our final shots for today. Uh, Dustin, final shot. What do you got for us this week? Well, happy like one year anniversary to sports ending. <laughs> It was oh, like that's... a year ago today, this week, sometime, everybody kind of has their day. I know mine was the Thursday of all this. Of, and I remember just watching Big East tournament and like scrolling through Twitter, mm-hmm. telling my class, like, I don't know if we're going to meet again after spring break. And then you just see the Big East, like we're canceled an hour later, Big 12, we're done. Yep. Pac-12, we're not playing either. And I, it just started crumbling so fast. So I'm glad we have sports back. Glad that everything's kind of getting back to normal. But yeah, it's like a year ago today, this week, that the sports world crumbled through a pandemic. Bizarre. I'll just, I'll never forget the night of that, uh, finding out Rudy Gobert is tested positive and just like the pandemonium that. It, yeah. Just started happening right after. And then, like, oh, this guy was gu- uh, guarding Rudy Gobert. Oh, this person was like, oh, uh, they had to quarantine the whole jazz team for like f- six hours. I was, uh, what a. It's a uh, crazy week and couple days, especially like with everything starting to just yeah get canceled out of nowhere that we've never gone through before. So, and wasn't the tech Texas game? In the big, we were, were supposed to lead up. off today. We were warming we were up warming for the up. game. Yeah, yeah, I do remember that. Actually, I forgot about that. They were like on the court warming up. Yeah, and then canceled. Like no fans. Games, they were like already like a couple games in, like halfway through a game or something, and it was it was wild. I mean, I was trying to watch it at work and following stuff through Twitter, and it just it literally got like collapsed, or everywhere. Yeah. 
crazy. Can't wait for that ESPN 30 for 30. Seriously. Really a good one. Uh, so, Brooks, final shot for the week. What do you got, man? Um, I've got a couple, but I'm going to go with the departure of Les Miles from Kansas. Um, and following today, the athletic director is now no. out. So Kansas in crumbles right now. Um, uh, Les Miles, I don't know if you've if you out there have heard of it, but you know, and back in 2013, I guess there was some stuff with him and females at LSU that came to, uh, to the light this past week. Uh, and so he was terminated from uh, Kansas. Yeah, pretty bad stuff. And then today the athletic director was let go as well. Um, he claimed that he had vetted him and that knew nothing of this. But after that news today, I'm I'm assuming that some of that's not true. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, Kansas, Kansas in the limelight, not for good reasons. Um, Les Miles has two years at Kansas are <laughs> pretty unmemorable. I mean, look at how many misses on football that that AD has had. And they're like, they don't do anything else with their other sports. Like oh, it's literally yeah. itself in basketball, holding everything up. Crazy. Like, I don't know what that athletic director has been doing, but yeah, their whole yeah. process is terrible with hiring less miles, apparently. So see ya. Now it's going to be tough to see where they go. Yeah. I saw uh, last chance you posted uh, that co- that guy who was at, um, oh, that Kansas Juco one the last time they did last chance you. But sure, go for it. Who cares? Yeah. Um, did you have a do you have a second one for final shots or is that gonna be it for uh, uh I mean guess ties into that one, but last chance you basketball is out now, so <laughs> oh is that a thing? <laughs> they did they did a basketball version of last chance you, so that came out today. So I think I'm, I'm gonna watch, watch that. that probably I couldn't pretty soon. I couldn't stand watching the last chance you football one. I, I thought it was a good concept show, but the some of the accents of the players and like I couldn't understand them half the time that they had to like start putting audio dubs over them. I was just I gave up on the show. I couldn't like it was even in like I think it was like the first episode. I'm like I I, I can't watch this. I tried I tried to watch it. I couldn't do it. Um okay cool. Uh is that gonna be your final shot for the day. Sweet sweet. Uh mine goes out to uh, SMU women's basketball actually random one but. They fired their head coach, or they re- didn't re-sign him. Uh, there was a girl. There's a girl that I know that is uh, used to play for him and used to play on the SMU women's basketball team. She plays professionally over in Europe now, but she actually went on testimony and uh, and testified against this guy. The athletic director kept him on, taking the coach's side, and uh, basically this guy had a very very toxic environment and uh, was constantly telling his players that they needed to to kill themselves if they were not going to compete on the basketball floor to the level that he wanted. Like Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like like this dude was pulling some some big big horseshit moves and the athletic department was still backing him even though there was numerous complaints. And so, he was finally let go today or yesterday. Uh so so long farewell dickhead. I hope you don't get another job. Get out of here. That's my final shot. Hey, Nara. Um, Kansas can hire him as a football coach. I, they probably will. <laughs> uh, so that's my final take for the day. Um, all right, guys. So that's going to wrap up the show. Uh, make sure you follow on the socials uh, at tailgate underscore talks for the Twitter page, Instagram, and Facebook. Obviously, go look those up as well. Personal accounts for uh, Dustin on Twitter. That is at Dustin Wimmer 22. Brooks is at Calvin B. Barrett. Me is at Blanca where the L is a one. Uh, make sure you also go check out the YouTube channel. Uh, links for all of this is in the stream chat. If you want to give us a follow, uh, there is, there's all of them. Cool. Um, as far as the email goes for the show, again, make sure you're sending us thoughts and questions or anything that you think we can do to better the show for you, better the quality or things that you want us to be talking about. That is get us, get to know us better. Maybe. I don't know if you want to, I, 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 uh, I don't know. I was going to say something dumb. Um, ask the tailgate i don't know uh, wh- whatever uh, any sort of inputs we have it there for you uh tailgate talks pod at gmail.com make sure you check that out um as far as the shot bets for this week just a quick reminder it's clippers versus mavs monday night 
and then the other one is going to be the Big 12 Championship game. We will let y'all know via social media what those two uh, final teams are and wh- what the shot bet will be. And uh, again, t-shirt uh, giveaway will be next Monday night when we're doing the Tailgate Talks official bracket. Uh, we will be doing it live on the Twitch stream. You got to be present. Type in the chat. Say hello. I'm here. And uh, that will enter you for your shot to win this week's Tailgate Crashers entry. All right, uh, and it comes with a t-shirt. <laughs> um, cool. Any other input for the week, guys? Is that going to be it? Good. All right. Well, guys, uh, appreciate everybody stopping by, everybody that, that hung out in the chat, everybody watching right now. Thank you. And uh, we will catch you all uh, Monday, Monday night. Peace. Thank you.